For Kruma Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Madli. Co-editor of Section 27's Basic Education Rights Handbook, Tasneem Katrada, joins me today to discuss the newly launched second edition. Section 27 has updated its Basic Education Rights Handbook. For those unfamiliar with it, can you briefly tell us what it is? The handbook is meant as a sort of a learning um, resource and a sort of education, civic education resource. Uh, it's sort of details the landscape of education rights and policy in South Africa. So it deals with the legal landscape, it deals with um, activist struggles in various like sectors of law. Um, so for example, school admissions, school violence, um, school activism, things like that. And who should be using this handbook? Who is it you know, aimed towards? Well, what we quite like about it is it has quite a wide reach and it's really meant for a wide variety of stakeholders. So while it's very much, we've tried to make it accessible and in very sort of accessible language and terms, it's not, you know, like legally abstract. It is for school communities, school governing boards, but we also hope that academics can use it, that sort of um, students can use it. So it's really got sort of like quite a wide reach that we're really hoping for. Now, the first edition was launched in 2017. What's been updated in this new edition? Well, we sort of decided to update this new edition because they'd, you know, it's such a dynamic area of law and policy that we sort of were seeing changes in the last five years. The last education handbook was published in 2017. We've included new chapters on it. So we have a chapter on learner admissions and the kind of policy around that and struggles that people have had. But then we also have a chapter on comprehensive sexuality education, which is also in the curriculum. So we want to really deal with things that maybe were new in the curriculum, new in case law. Um, and then besides from that, all the chapters that were there before have been updated to reflect the current state of, of education law in SA. Now, talk to us about the success of the first edition. It was even cited in a high court judgment. Yeah, no, we, I mean, one of the reasons why we sort of thought to update it was because the first edition was so hugely successful. So like you said, it's been featured in a high court judgment, but it's also been part of university sort of courses in law or in education. It's been used by activist organizations. We use it in our own trainings for in terms of civic education. So it's really been really well received there. Sometimes we get emails from students asking how do we cite this. Um, so it's really sort of been very successful in that, in that capacity. One of the chapters deals with the rights of refugees and migrant learners. And right now in South Africa, as you know, xenophobia and the rights of migrants access to healthcare has been significantly highlighted. What are the issues affecting migrant learners and parents in accessing education in South Africa? Well, you know, I've been married, but I think, um, especially like in this chapter, one of the things we also deal with is a right of access to education, the right to equal education. So uh, about two, three years ago, we had a case called the Pakamisa case, which sort of really ruled that you can't deny access to undocumented learners to school just because of their status. So we really deal around issues like that, which I think are really about access and the right not to be discriminated against in terms of education. So we really, and even in our advice office, we sometimes find that um, people come to us and they said, well, either we're undocumented or we're migrants, but the school is being difficult with like getting us like access to the school or not taking our documentation. So it's really like issues like around that that we found. Um, and the chapter sort of highlights that quite nicely, I think. And what are you ultimately hoping that the handbook does in terms of helping, um, you know, different sectors in education? Uh, I think we really hope that the, like I said before, that it has wide applicability, but we also hope that it is like, used very um, widely as a civic edu education tool. I think, you know, often people think of rights and, you know, enforcing those rights and taking steps to enforce those rights. It's a very abstract concept. Sometimes I think it's almost felt, so this is really trying to bring the fact that, you know, asserting your constitutionally mandated rights is very much a sort of on the ground, very real um, active st struggle. And we sort of highlight ways in which people can do that. So it's kind of making the connections. And I think that's really, really helpful. If you do look at the handbook, what I think is also very good about it is, like I said, it's, it's about enforcing rights, but in many sort of cases, we give you guidelines to things. So in, for example, our corporate punishment chapter, if, um, if you're maybe a learner or a parent and you're reading this and you're like, your child has been assaulted, 
there are sort of measures by a teacher and within the school context, there are measures that you can take and there are steps that you can take to sort of remedy the issue to get relief for your child. Um, so that's also what I think people should be on the lookout for. Lastly, Tasneem, we have a copy of the handbook up on our Polity website. But for those looking for hard copies, where could they find them? Well, like you said, there is a PDF up on hand on, well, on your website. We also have a PDF version that's free on our website. But if you go to our website and you'd like to order a hard copy, um, you can just sort of see our contact details on the handbook website blurb. So um, it's an email address that you can email and then you can request for a hard copy. That was Tasneem Katrada, co-editor of Public Interest Law Center, Section 27's Basic Education Rights Handbook.